kind of the reorg in the military it's called reorging site reorganization area for the war in Somalia uh, military choppers fly to Garissa before they can find their bearing if they want to reload to refuel so it should be fairly militarized like you said and with all the previous uh, issues that we've had in uh, that region Garissa is one of the most policed uh, towns in the country mm -hmm. so we expect or we should have expected results by now but again as we've always said earlier on on this show we said we need to devolve special forces to the counties because god forbid if this was happening in mandera this morning garissa meru nakuru simultaneously how do you deal with it this is not an average uh, kind of a situation where any officer can go in and deal with this is a special forces operation you need specialized maybe those guys are already armed with bombs maybe they are suicide bombers they have they are strapped with bombs in um, in russia when they when terrorists did this kind of a, 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 an active shooter situation they came in held hostages and we hear their hostages and strapped bombs on the hostages. Mm. So you walk in and all the bombs just begin when to When you explode. say special forces, are you saying the KDF and the officers do not have capacity to handle this live situation? They do, but this situation requires people specialized in that kind of operation. That's why they're called special forces. Not an average KDF officer can, can deal with this. KDF involves the Air Force, Navy, and all those are different units you can't tell a, a, a supplies officer at Kenya Air Force or a supplies officer at K, I mean Kenya Army pick the gun this. and go deal with this. Mm -hmm. There must be the Rangers, the Army Rangers, the, the, the special unit that is trained on this. Mm -hmm. You can't tell an average policeman go in and deal with this. They do not even have the equipment for it. The equipment is only with a specialized unit like the Reke Squad. So this is why I'm saying right now as we speak, if it started at five, up to now, that's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Our problem has always been slow response. We respond so slowly, we give the enemy time. Mm -hmm. Soon after the previous, uh, the, the Westgate attack, I, I put a, a newspaper write up in the standard just after Westgate. And I said in the article that, look, these terrorists have come to die. They, they, they love death like we love life. So why are we giving them the pleasure to be alive longer? We should kill them quickly because the longer they stay, the more people they kill. Okay. Um, and uh, just uh, bringing you up to speed, this is an unfolding story with the uh, Mandera attack. And uh, we've got... Garissa. Uh, uh, ga sorry, Garissa. Garissa attack, I, um, I beg your pardon. And uh, we're bringing you uh, to sp up to speed with what's unfolding as it comes in. So far, we have Red Cross saying they have eight dead. Uh, we have several in hospital. However, we don't have a confirmed number, uh, but we'll bring you that story as we go along. And uh, with us in the studio, we have security analysts. And I also want to bring in Francis Miner. Um, who is a security analyst and uh, yes we definitely will keep you posted as, as the information is coming in. Indeed let's uh, rope in uh, Francis Manu is also a security, security analyst. You've had what um, Bijou had to say as far as response because let's begin there we've been reporting it is a live situation as we speak gunfire is being heard still at the university uh, Garissa University. What are your thoughts on why this is taking so long? You see, good morning. Good morning. What? One thing I would like to put it is like, Gariza University is a soft target. It, this place is whereby there are civilian controlled uh, population. They have minimal or probably with no security armed person within the compound. And probably they have one or two APs. You see, these people, <coughs> they do a lot of surveillance or what you call in the military language, a dry run. They have walked around and they have seen probably Gariza College is more better is more better of a soft target because they would not like to provoke the barracks in Garissa because of the fireworks. So to me, I would like to give the Kenyans assurance that on soft targets like the one in Paris just about two months ago on Charlie Abdul magazine, you see you saw these two guys shooting all the, all the you know all the I, you know the, the editors and everybody dead and they walked away. It takes some time for the government to scramble up uh, the security personnel, special forces, and took about them uh, for 72 hours to catch up with them in, uh, in Hyderabad where they were. But so we have the Inspector me, General. Me, yes. The casualty 
uh, around Gariza University, if the operation is not well organized, the casualties will be more than, uh, you know, than uh, prop purposely if the standoff continued yeah. and they get, they get themselves, arrange themselves, and they are able to work in inside. You know, they have to get the sketch of the building. They have to know which, uh, which hall, where these people they are, where we are getting gunfire. You see, it's not an issue that you walk in with a gun, then you are able to sort it out. And two also, as Biju has said, we have a scatty, we have a few profile special forces. People who are used to what we call urban welfare, or people who are trained on very dangerous missions. People who can walk in, they are able to recognize the situation, they are able to arrange themselves. You see, we have some, a bit of a shortages on all these issues, but at the moment what I would like to assure Kenyans is I will not be on the forefront for a storming in because it will be more dangerous to storm in rather than to reassess the situation from a distance, arrange themselves, engage them in one side, but not really the storming out of trying to mop it out because you get more casualties. If you flush them out, you get more cash with this. Which is what the Inspector General in his statement said, because first you uh, link the reason as to why this has taken so long is that this was a soft target and that they perhaps did not have enough uh, hands on deck in terms of officers. But we understand from the Inspector General that immediately after this um, gunman attacked, there were reinforcements in terms of the numbers, KDF and the police. So they're talking about an elaborate process of flashing out. He thinks that is not the way to go. They should be out planning so that they can go in with a plan. Is that the same way you look at it? Um, uh, yes, I agree with uh, Mina because unfortunately, we always let the enemy lead the show here. Earlier on, when Senate Committee for, for National Security asked me to advise them on these issues, in our recommendation, we said, all critical infrastructure within our cities, our counties, should submit their building plans to the special forces. And again, that was premised on the fact that special forces could devolve. So you're thinking of Rekes Code unit in Garissa County, receiving all the building plans for all the possible enemy, tar I mean, uh, uh, terrorist targets in the city, and do simulated, you know, attacks, acquaint themselves with those building plans way in advance. So unfortunately, as Maina said, the day, the day day is when they, they ask for the plan. They don't even know it was. Maybe they are looking for it at the city council now, at the county council offices, to try and acquaint themselves, was there a tunnel, was there something? When that should have been done way in advance. In Nairobi City, we said, in our report, we said, please, KICC, parliament building, every critical infrastructure, submit those building plans to the, to the special forces. Give them to the commandant, Rekke Squad unit. Say, give your boys this, let them know how KICC is. Mm -hmm. Because who yeah. knows where they may target next because time. Because you say critical structures, and I want Mike maybe to read for us this statement, and that this was a notice that was put up at the University of Nairobi, because now in reports are, it's emerging that there was this intelligence of an imminent attack on a university. But you say that some of these structures and information has been sort of critical structures. But this is not one of those you'd imagine. You mentioned KICC, some of what the security organs would have, want to have information on. But this is what this particular notice says. And the report says, intelligence reports indicate that the Al-Shabaab terror group is planning retaliatory attacks uh, on uh, vital institutions in Nairobi, including major universities. The information is already being processed by the relevant government agencies with an objective of putting necessary measures in place uh, to fail any such attempt. You are hereby advised to continue being vigilant diligent while in your university and crowded places. Be conscious of any suspicious persons or luggage uh, that is uh, as you go about your daily schedule. And just to add on to that, um, one of uh, the notices that had
had even been put up in uh, one of the local universities. This is USIU. While various security agencies continue to zero in on fresh, credible intelligence of Al-Shabaab and its affiliates uh, um, and sympathizers, retaliatory security threats on Kenya with a view to neutralize their links. And of course, they are now telling their students that they need to be extra vigilant, vigilant. showing that there was some sort of intelligence that this could happen. Uh, question is, did we act on the intelligence? Uh, did the necessary authorities do what they needed to do, given that the university level were actually Or were they thrown that? off by that first initial statement that read major universities? Mm -hmm. You see, these guys are also very smart. If you look at <coughs> the guys joining the ISIS and uh, the El Shabaab, like the lady who blew herself up in Mogadishu, she comes from Norway. She's, a tr she's an educated person who's going to universities in the, Western, in the Western world. So these people, they can work on it, try to put like they are coming to Nairobi, and use a softer target between Garissa, Mandela, and Wajir. And you see one thing. In Garissa, these people, they can have Rocco cells. They can have uh, international cells accommodated by the local cells. So uh, in Garissa, they are more comfortable. Garissa, Mandela, Wajir, and uh, Lam, they are more comfortable because they have their own local people whom they share the language, the religion, their culture. And uh, it, it, I mean, it takes, when you go to Nyeri and you get a Mungiki person, and uh, when another Mungiki person comes from Kebu goes to Nyeri, they know each other very fast, because they, they, they understand each other on the business of extortion, on the business of killing. You know, I'm just giving an example. So when they come to Gariza, they are more easier to brand in, uh, within the community there, the local community, because the local community there understands their culture from the other side of Somalia. And two, they have to retaliate. Because one, they lost Gendo, Gendo province, in, you know, you know, in the north of Kismai, to the Amazon. So now they are scattered. These are the remnants of, uh, of, of uh, the El Shabaab. Yeah, but, but to the to question of intelligence and whether it, they were thrown off by the mention of major universities, this is a university that's in Garissa. Some may not perceive it as major. You're seeing at this one, it says in the University of Nairobi, you have another at USIU. Perhaps one was not put up there. Although we have students that we've been speaking to saying they had expressed concern to the authorities that they were feeling unsafe. They thought they needed to be more done in terms of security. So do you, in your opinion as a security analyst, going by that information, think the intelligence did enough to avert this particular attack? You see, I would not say they have not done because they have arrested several other big major criminals. But on around. this attack? But this one, they would like to, to throw a spanner at works. They would like to, to make sure they, they, they are ahead of uh, the security personnel. They put in the university. What you'd get on the university, you'd go to JK, JQUAT, KU, Nairobi University, USIU, you know, the main universities. But you see the small concentrated universities, you take for granted they might not have an interest. Mm -hmm. And what the criminals or the internet or the terrorists they would like to have in this international community is to make sure that they throw the government off, off hook, then they hit below the belt on a smaller, softer target, which is far much easier to walk in, walk out, and, and go. Even me, I would have expected them to be in the main universities like Egypton, Nairobi, and whatever. So to me, when they got uh, Garissa, they have also taken me as a good analyst mm -hmm. who, who, I mean, uh, with, with stock, because okay. they... All right. Mm -hmm. All right, Vijiwe, what, what's your take on the fact that intelligence, first of all, just by virtue of the name intelligence, means that they should be ahead of the game in, 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 in a way. So um, in regards to this particular attack, did they uh, do what they're...